everyone, my name is Amber, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be recommending about 30 thriller books I think that you should read. Two things I want to mention before getting into the video. First of all, this is going to be a really quick one. I'm not going to go into too much detail about these books. Firstly, because they're thrillers and you want to go into those mostly blind. And secondly, because I have about 30 to get through. So I can't go into too much depth about all of them. I've also done a horror recommendations video. I will link that up above if you're interested in watching it, please do. And without further ado, let's get into the books. The first ones I want to mention are kind of a collection. They're all by Gillian Flynn. So I would recommend all of her books because I loved all of them. The first one is called Sharp Objects and the start place is Gone Girl, which is her most popular and the grown up which is a novella. So my favourite out of hers, spoiler for an upcoming video, is Dark Places. I thought it was just really well done, it was really really dark and really really interesting. So I loved that one, I loved all of her books but that one was my favourite. Then I'm going to recommend The Silent Patient which is about a woman who is in a mental hospital and she refuses to speak and then this journalist guy becomes a doctor there a bit sketchy because he wants to be the one who first hits her talk again. The issue here being that she is also accused of murdering her previous husband. I've done a full review of this one, I'll leave it up above, it's really popular, I did really enjoy it. It's not the greatest book by any means but I did really really enjoy it, it's really fast paced, I think you would like it. The Guest List by Lucy Foley, again I have done a full review of this one, I'll leave that up above as well. This is about a group of people who gather on an Irish island which is very remote and dark and dingy rainy for a wedding and then someone dies and someone murdered them. Hunting Party also by Lucy Foley. This one is a very similar vibe but this one is set in the Scottish Highlands which is one of my favourite settings so I would highly recommend that one mostly for the atmosphere to be honest. And again the next ones I'm going to recommend are a collection and those are all by Ruth Ware. So I love her books. I read all of them now. I did a video last year in which I vlogged my reading of all of them apart from her latest obviously. I decided which one I thought was best so go and watch that video if you are interested if you like reading vlogs. The only one I didn't really didn't like of hers is The Woman in Cabin 10. I thought it was awfully written but all of the others were fantastic so my absolute favourite is The Turn of the Key. And then you've also got One by One which is also great. The Death of Miss Westaway which I loved. The Lion Game which was really good and In a Dark Darkwood which was her debut and I did really really enjoy it. Then I want to recommend a series and it's very uncommon to have a thriller series. You tend to get them more in mysteries and this one is Still House Lake series by Rachel Kane. <laughs> Still House Lake is about a woman whose husband, now ex-husband, was a serial killer. He killed a lot of young women and did horrible things to their bodies and then put the, their bodies in the nearby lake. So one day, right at the beginning of the book, someone crashes into the family's garage and finds one of the girl's bodies there. The husband is put away, there's obviously no question as to what he has done, and the wife has to change her name along with her children and go into hiding because first of all the husband has like a fan club which is super creepy and they don't like the wife for sta not standing by her husband because obviously she hates him. Also members of the public don't like her because they think that she was involved in the serial killings. So I love this series. It does take a bit of a dip right in the middle. Currently there are four books out and there will be five come 2021. So I didn't love the middle book but I have really enjoyed all of the others. I gave the first two five stars. I thought they were fantastic but then they sort of take a bit of a turn. Before I go to sleep this is about a woman who loses her memories every time she goes to sleep. I think she was in an accident or something and her husband has to take care of her. That's all I want to say about that one. It's really fast paced. It's really small, short. So I think it's best to go into it knowing nothing at all because things take a turn very quickly. The next one is a bit different, it's a sci-fi thriller and that is Dark Matter by Blake Crouch. I read this at the beginning of this year, I think, and it got to me. That's all I remember thinking about this book. So this is about a man who bumps into what seems to be his doppelganger and it actually turns into like a parallel universe, timey-wimey kind of thing and it brought up some real like moral questions and I found it very interesting, very fast paced and I loved it. The next one's all by Sherry Lapina. So she is quite a prolific thriller writer now. I think she's written and released maybe five books. My favourite of hers is actually the first one I read and that is The Couple Next Door. This one is about a family whose child is taken while they're at a dinner party at the neighbour's house so they have to try to find their baby. I have to say I still think that this is the best one that I've read. Some of them have a bit of a different vibe. They aren't as thrilling. They're more of a mystery or small town drama mystery kind of thing. Kind of like Big Little Lies. And then the next ones again is another collection and that's by Jane Harper. She has written The Dry Force of Nature, The Lost Man and most recently The 
Lewis survivors and I have adored all of her books. So my favourite of hers is The Lost Man which is her third book that she released. This is about family who live in the outback on a farm or a couple of different farms and one of the brothers is found dead and it is more of a slower read, it's a lot more low key I think but the setting, she does fantastic jobs with her setting so obviously it's boiling hot, it's dry and it's in the outback and it's all very isolated and that is where she truly shines and I also love the relationships between all of the family members and getting to know their history and what kind of led up to the brother's death. The Dry is also really good, it's coming out as a movie in January I believe and Eric Bana, Bana is playing the main character, I don't really care about him all that much but I love The Dry so I'll be checking this movie out. Then there's The Wife Between Us which is the only book by these authors that I have read. I really enjoyed this one, I thought it was super fast paced, I have heard that their follow up books are not as good which is a shame but this one is about a woman who seems to be quite obsessed with her husband's new wife and she wants to kind of warn the new wife away from him. Next we have a YA book because I think that's what this list is missing and that is One of Us is Lying and also One of Us is Next by Karen M. McManus who by the way is releasing a new book in December, it's called The Cousins and I cannot wait for it. So One of Us is Lying is set in a, well first of all it starts off in the classroom, the, these kids are all brought into detention together even though they haven't really done anything wrong. One of the boys dies after drinking some water that seems to be laced with peanut juice juice. He's allergic to peanuts and people knew this so people think that one of those classmates killed him. The sequel by the way is much much better. I did really enjoy One of Us is Lying but One of Us is Next I have done a full review for. I'll leave that up above if I still have space in the cards. The Whisper Man which is really really creepy so Alex North does a fantastic job with the atmosphere of his book. He also released one recently called The Shadows and it was the same deal with that. His atmosphere was incredible. You cannot beat it. So The Whisper Man is about a father and son who move back to the father's hometown. In this town there's a kind of urban legend about a whisper man who comes to windows, whispers and then takes children. So I will leave you with that. Seven Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle. I loved this one. I gave it five stars. I think I should have done anyway. So this is about a man who has to try to solve the death of Evelyn Hardcastle and I don't really want to say anything other than that because the book is really twisty turny and there are a lot of different things involved so I don't want to give anything away accidentally. It's set in this big country manor house. It feels kind of gothic and very mysterious and I loved it. The Chalk Man by CJ Tudor. I don't actually love CJ Tudor's books but this is the only one of hers that I have really enjoyed. This is about a group of people who grew up together and as children they used to put uh, chalk on the ground and draw little men to show that they wanted to go outside and play and they also have like several secrets between them. So again it's another like small town thriller mystery which I really really enjoy. My Sister the Serial Killer, this one is set in Nigeria I believe and it's about a woman who has to keep covering up her sister who is a serial killer, she keeps killing her boyfriends. I would say this one is a bit more of a dark humour sort of thing rather than a thriller but I did really enjoy it, I would recommend reading it. It's only a short book as well so if you're not sure it's for you it is tiny so you'll get through it really quickly. Child 44 which is a historical thriller, this is is also a film starring Tom Hardy which I haven't seen, I haven't heard good things about it and there are also some sequels which again haven't heard good things about. So this one is set in Russia after the Second World War and it's about a man who is looking into the deaths of children but because this is Russia post Second World War there are no missing children in Soviet Russia so he has to kind of battle with the government, the police force and also with his own morals and how he wants to find these kids. I loved it, gave it five stars. Next one I want to recommend is Sadie. I would recommend reading this specifically as an audiobook because it's told in mixed media formats. So it's about a girl called Sadie whose sister has been killed. The two of them have grown up very, very poor. Sadie wants to go off and find her sister's murderer. The next point of view is actually a person who runs a podcast and those chapters are told after Sadie has gone off to find her sister's killer and he's kind of investigating the disappearance of Sadie and he's going around and interviewing people and it's told in a full cast of characters, narrators and I loved it, gave it five stars, I can't wait to find out what Courtney Summers is coming out with next. I think she's got a new book coming out uh, late winter in 2021. And then I mentioned this book earlier but I also want to recommend Big Little Lies which is super popular so some of you may have already read it. It's again another small town mystery drama, this time it's set in Australia and this is about a group of women who are mums and they come together. Right at the beginning of the book you find out that someone is dead and so there's a lot of like rich people drama 
a lot of domestic abuse so trigger warning for that it got to me a lot but i would highly recommend this book i loved it gave it five stars then we have some books by fiona barton who wrote the widow among other things and i do really enjoy her books i'm not going to say what any of them are about because that would take me forever to go through each one but she writes really good thrillers they're set in the uk and they're kind of a mix of domestic thriller journalist thriller and a little bit of police thriller i think the it's not a series, but it focuses on the same journalists and detectives, so the same sort of people. And I think it's going to turn into more of a police thing later on if she releases more books, which I hope she does because she writes really good ones. Room, which isn't really a mystery thriller, but I found it quite thrilling when I read it. I read it in one sitting while I was on a video call with my friends. I was being really antisocial and just wanted to read this book. So this is about a woman and a child. It's told from the child's point of view, so some people didn't like it because it sounded quite childish, but because it's told from his point of view anyway so it's about a woman and a child who the woman was abducted and she has had her abductor's baby and they are found they managed to escape him and from the child's point of view you see him try to get used to all of these people he now knows and society in general and then also the mother dealing with her PTSD from what she went through. The Ice Twins, which is a really good thriller set in Scotland, I believe, Scottish Highlands, maybe on an island. It was really dark and dreary. I remember that. I read this one years ago. I really, really enjoyed it. It's about family who move up there and then creepy twins uh, are involved somehow. That's all I'm going to say about that. We need to talk about Kevin, which I guess isn't really a thriller. It's more of a mystery. So it's told from the point of view of the mother whose son Kevin has done something awful. I can't remember if you're told what it is. And she is kind of reflecting on the way that she raised him and whether it's kind of a nature versus nurture kind of thing because she's going over all the things that he used to do when he was younger. But the question is whether or not she is reflecting on these in hindsight and she is recalling these moments and then thinking, yeah, he's like the devil, when really it was just normal children things. So it's a really interesting book, a really good one to discuss as well. If you're interested in doing it for a book club, I would recommend that. The Girl in 6E, which again is a bit different to the rest of this list because it's an erotic thriller. It's about a woman who is a cam girl from her apartment. She doesn't leave her apartment because she is convinced that if she does leave, she will do something awful and she'll probably kill someone. So then there's some sort of mystery that I'm not gonna talk about that she wants to then investigate, but that would mean leaving her apartment. So she has to kind of investigate through the internet while also bigging herself up to go outside. And then I just wanted to mention a few YA thrillers because I feel like I've left a lot of off of this list. First of all, there's Truly Devious, which is more of a mystery. It's about a girl called Stevie who wants to figure out the mystery behind the founders of the academy. So she goes to the academy, becomes a student, and starts investigating. So it's a three book series at the moment. I think there's another one coming out, but I'm not sure I'm going to read it because the series kind of goes downhill, but I really enjoyed the first book. The Cheerleaders, which is one that I read recently. This is a lot more emotional than I was expecting. This one is about a girl whose sister was a cheerleader and she has died. And I think three or four of her other friends who were cheerleaders also died around the same time so the main character is convinced that something awful was going on in town and someone was killing the cheerleaders so she starts to investigate that there's also a student teacher relationship which is not good it's portrayed well i think i think the author did a really good job of addressing how wrong it was all your twisted secrets this is kind of a locked room mystery all the characters gather around the dinner table at this abandoned house start dying. There are a few flashbacks in there as well to show what's leading up to this and why the students are all in there so I would highly recommend this one. I really really enjoyed it. It was actually a debut for this year and I think the author did a fantastic job. And finally we have People Like Us which is set in a boarding school and it's really really creepy. I don't really want to say too much about it but dead bodies show up at the school and you think that one of the students may be involved. So those are my 30 plus thrillers. I'm not actually sure how many I did get through. I've got 28 listed here but some of them are just authors so I reckon we've got maybe 40 books that I've recommended here. Let me know if you have read any of these, if you agree with my recommendations down in the comments below. Also let me know if you are now interested in reading any of them or if you've got any recommendations for me, I would really appreciate that. Thank you so much for watching and I'll speak to you all in my next video. Bye!